Hi, I'm Glenn Brooks. I just exhale. That's a really good thing. It's a miracle how our breath works through us. Healing does the same thing. I want to welcome you to uh, Beyond the Formula and Unscripted Power. And I want to acknowledge that Rose Revere is here with us today. She's, uh, I, call aws- I call Rose Awesome Rose because in, in the uh, getting paid for who you are, one of the things we teach, I teach, is that one other person could transform everything in your life. I feel like Rose, when I met you, we went from the pink room to the blue room. And I just want to say, it's just such an honor working with you. Ah, thank you, Glenn. Likewise, likewise. As is your work, we always do better when we collaborate. So, so I'm excited so to be here. You know, is our health by design or by accident? There's so many people I've treasured in my life, and it seemed like things were going along and they were there. My grandfather, who I wanted to move in with when I was 16, I felt he was the only person I could really be with. You know, I, I had a very turbulent relationship with other family members. He went to the doctor on a Wednesday night. And he passed away that morning. The doctor told him he was in normal health, whatever that means. I'm really honored to have with us today Dr. Gary Epler, Level 10 Energy. He's a world-renowned pulmonary care specialist, a critical care doctor. The thing that Gary does that I think is extraordinary is he teaches people about that in-between place that generates health and well-being. Um, I think for a lot of people, it's like, is, is, is health a question of, is it by design or by accident? A lot of us have no idea. I know people who see tons of specialists, they couldn't answer that. I know tons of specialists that couldn't answer that. There's something in between that we don't learn or discover that's significant. And that is, what is this question of generating health and sharing it? And I can think of no better person than my team member, someone I profoundly appreciate deeply, Dr. Gary Epler. Gary, welcome. Well, very good. Hey, you know, Good to see you again, Glenn, and you know, you're looking good. Thank you. Well, you know, as I prepare for this tennis project, part of playing an exhibition match with a former number one player is the process of discovering my body, connections. A lot of us don't think about all the subtleties that really make for extraordinary health. And I know you're in the study of that. You're in the the demonstration study. You and your wife drone run every day, and you run many marathons. How did you... Depart, if you will, from the conventional, you know, you're here one day, you kind of degenerate, you get, you get what's called a disease, then you ch- start to check out, and then you die. How did, what, was your, what was the shift for you? Well, the shift, I'm, I'm writing a book about health, 15 health habits, to really, to really live a great life. It's called sort of from ordinary to extraordinary. And those 15 health habits, that's what really got me started. And today we want to talk about one of them. It's self-healing. I'm ready. Okay, here we I, go. I know Rose is ready. Uh, oh, yeah, I love this yeah. stuff. Are you kidding? Yeah. Well, Rose, ask, what's your opening question? When you said, and, and, and for Glenn and for, for Rose, we're going to talk about couples healing too. That's always an exciting topic. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> so let's start out. He, healing's a process, and it, it's just restoring health, both mental health and physical health. And at any one time, something needs some attention to healing whether it's a, it's a knee, whether it's a heart or, or, or diabetes, something needs some healing attention. And here's what I do. Three processes, three, three sort of steps. First one, learn everything you can about whatever you're dealing with. If it's an injury, what are the ligaments? What are the tendons? What muscles are involved? If it's a heart problem, everything you can learn about the heart. Diabetes, learn everything about it. The diagnosis, the treatment. And then, Treatment options. And, and is what you want with the treatment options, make sure you find the natural history of the disease. You need to know. It, sometimes you don't need to do anything. So then pick the best option for you. Not the option that the doctor may want, not the healthcare system option, not whatever the insurance company. Pick it for you. Whether it's medicines, chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, just pick the best one for you. Then we go to step two, and that is create an environment to heal. And this starts out, have to have a positive approach to the illness. You have to say, yes, I can manage this. And you know, Glenn, managing it is good enough. Don't need to cure it. Just manage it. Because if you can manage it, it no longer becomes part of your life. So think of it in terms you can manage the situation. 
Secondly, you get into things like uh, you, you have to, again, create this environment to heal. And, and, and a good one, it, it, it's a strange word, but it's called compassion. You have to have compassion for that organ system or that injury, not anger. Anger, some people say, oh, why me? Why did this happen? You're mad and angry. That is going to cause more problems. It's going to make the inflammation worse, and it's going to actually make the process worse. You have compassion. Strange word, but it actually works. Compassion for that disease process. And the final one in this creating environment to heal is controlled breathing. Uh, one of them, the quick one, it's reflex, is some abdominal breathing, some belly breathing, I call it. Take a couple of belly breaths. Put your hand on your belly and have that belly go out when you breathe in. It's instant relaxation. It makes you feel a little better. And the other one is yoga breathing. Just 50% in, 50% out, 50% in, 50% out. Just these things. It'll just help calm the situation, improve this environment, the healing environment. The last one is visualization. Visualization can come in uh, very handy. And, and the best time to visualize, use visualization, is what, uh, what I call uh, alpha brainwave state meditation. It's, it's daydreaming. We have three or four uh, brainwaves uh, that, we, that we have. We have beta uh, brainwaves, which Glenn and Rose and I are in right now, and you are in. Uh, that's our standard sort of waking one. Alpha, alpha slower. And that's the one, the rapid eye movement that you may see your a partner or someone uh, with their eyes moving or dreaming. That's alpha. And that's a wonderful thing to be in when you're awake. And then the next is theta. It's a little deep, deep sleep. But if you can do that when you're awake, it's phenomenal things happen. And of course, delta, real slow. You need 15 minutes of that. So you want to get in the alpha state. And then you can do several things. Uh, I sort of... You, you find what you, you develop a, a healing place. <laughs> Can't think of any better word, but it's a healing place with your mind. You visualize a place. Maybe it's on the beach. Maybe it's Cape Cod Beach. Maybe it's in California. Maybe it's a meadow or uh, in, in Colorado or, or, or trees or something, but a place where you can heal. And, and, and you, you go there and then you sit in a nice, comfortable chair, wonderful temperature, a breeze. And, and just send some healing energy to whatever needs to be healed at that time. And the other one is replace dysfunctional cells one at a time. Start with one and then another one and another one. Displace those dysfunctional ones with really healthy ones. And now you can get also, uh, you can repair the DNA of those cells as well. And then ignite those genes and, and do all of this. All of these, just with your mind, just, just uh, picture these things with your mind. But importantly, you need to come up with one, one on your own. You've done your research, you've looked up the disease, you've looked up whatever the injury is. Think of a process yourself. Uh, it, it can be far out, it can be normal, uh, but that, that will really come in uh, to help you out. So that's visualization. And those are the three steps. You, you have to uh, uh, you learn about everything. You have to create that environment to heal and then use visualization. Well, you know, the first step. Go ahead, Rose. Well, I actually, that was, I loved how you laid that out for everyone. That was so clear to follow. But I did have a couple questions that popped up, if you don't mind. Sure. So the first one, it's interesting because you say as soon as you have a diagnosis, go research yourself, right? Go find everything you can about it. And yeah. I think I think there is some backlash to that where there's a lot of doctors saying don't research everything. We hate the patients who come in that think they know everything and they've went to WebMD or whatever other place that they say that they have researched. So I just want to bring that up and how you feel about that and if – if you have sources that you would consider uh, very credible sources of information that people would go to. Sure, I, I absolutely bring that up. Uh, as I said, you want to take the option that's best for you, regardless of what the doctor, the doctor, the healthcare system or whatever, you're in charge. And, and, and as simple as that, you are in charge. And the more you learn about that disease process, 
the more you learn about that injury, the better. And if doctors say whatever they say, I, I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> the main thing is, is it, 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 it really helps the situation. The more you know, the more you understand that the process, the better you're going to be. As far as credible um, uh, sites, uh, common sense. It, it turns out there's, there's 10, 20, 30 sites for any particular disease. Uh, you're going to pick the right one. And, and preferably a Mayo Clinic or, or like the Brigham and Women's Hospital, uh, Mass Journal, NIH, for example, CDC, Center for Disease Control. These are just phenomenal sites. And, and if they have references, you, you know that you're dealing with something good. The other thing is, if, if somebody says something, you want to make sure that it's a study's been done. And, and, and you, you're going to be steered in the right direction if you do that. Love that, love that. So it's really a lot of self-trust in a way, you know. It is. Yeah. You will be pointed in the right direction. You have the ability to evaluate these things and, and just be, like you said, smart about it. And That's right. And the ones That's that you right. feel are best. That's, I love that. And then the uh, second Glenn, thing. Just, I have, Glenn, we, we talked about doing studies uh, in visualization, for example, uh, the self-help people uh, in rows, the, the, the self-help people say, all you have to do is visualize a goal and it'll happen. You don't even have to think about how it's done. Just let the universe take care of it. That's right. Don't be careful about that. It sounds good and it makes people feel good if you do that, but it can backfire. Take a, take a hundred students to say, okay, you visualize getting an A on that examination. The other hundred, forget it. Turns out that hundred that visualizes has got C's and the other hundred got their A's because they didn't study. They didn't put the time in. They compared the amount of time. And it's the same with goals. If you, if you visualize a goal and that's all you do, uh, whether it's a, a dream job, uh, whether it's a, a house or a dream job, same thing. Visualize a dream job. Oh, don't worry about how to do it. It's not going to work. People that, that don't do that are going to be better off. And so some things that sound like common sense and sound like, oh, they make you feel good, which they do. Uh, don't necessarily work and study them, but visualization process works. Visualize the process. Uh, for example, tennis, visualize that tennis process, not beating a component, just the process. And, and, and cross country runners, perfect cross country runners, they visualize that whole course. They don't visualize, oh, I'm going to get a 16.2 minutes or I'm going to beat that person from, from wherever. No, 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 no. They just visualize that course of process. And that's phenomenal. Yeah, I want to comment. I love Rose's question. I want to come back to it. I've had the honor of working with many people, uh, Mario Andretti, the race car driver, but I've had world-class people. One of them was John Diard. One of his points was it was runners. And I hear a master runner, seven to 10 miles a day, all kinds of weather, hills, no hills, traffic, no traffic. Well, his thing was that if, if you, what makes runners and athletes in general, uh, you know, age quicker, was the cortisol involved with competition. And he was kind of saying that if you, if you run for the enjoyment and you see your runners as co-participants, it's a whole different thing. I just thought I would, I would mention that because he, he definitely meant, you know, he talks about that kind of similar to, uh, Symington, when he first came up with the study about killing cancer cells. Some people felt, well, that was, there was a downside there. Some people would kill cancer cells, but other diseases would come in. So there's been a lot of exploring about, uh, about visualization, its purpose and function. And just to kind of take what Rose brought up, which I think is really great and, and you know, right on target. The challenge, I think, that what happens for some people, especially people that worry or they're a little overloaded anyway, is that reading about different disease processes gets their mind wrapped around the whole idea of, of the worst of, the worst side of the disease. So discern, using discernment and, and um, optimism, I'm curious. And the first thing you said, of course, I love, and, and me and you were with Dr. Bernie Siegel, it says it's always the rebel, the rule breakers, and the iconoclasts who actually, the ones who, who break the rules at the hospital, they're going to heal quicker. He says conform is like conformity, it's like a death sentence. I know I threw a few things at you, but I know, I know maybe a couple was stuck. So one would be, I guess, is being, you know, because you're saying to people, be a nonconformist. Don't conform and just be passive. Two, you're talking about learn. And Rose brought up the idea, what do you learn from? And then three, uh, you know, kind of, um, 
I guess, mobilizing the healing energy no matter what. Well, I think that I, that's right. I bet the learning is, yes, you can, you can pick all the bad things about it. Uh, but again, the, my second step is you have to approach it in a positive way. Okay. And, and the other thing about learning, you learn it, you learn it in a positive way. Uh, and uh, you just have to do that. Uh, otherwise, you will just end up down that, that negative pathway. You don't want to. We can talk about couples. Yeah, abs absolutely. absolutely. Uh, well, you know, here's the thing. Here's the interesting thing. My wife was diagnosed with Lyme disease about 10 years ago. And, uh, wow, I'm actually doing a series now sponsored by Yaya Organics, Yaya Organics, which is an organic essential oil tick repellent. And I tell you something, my deepest part of my marriage was really seeing Donna and, and appreciating her beyond the, the diagnosis. I have an, I had built an amazing team of people. I had Dr. Stephen Bach out of Rhinebeck. He's a Lyme specialist. He uses nutritional and, and natural methods and, and he uses antibiotics. I want to say, Gary, now in the middle of writing this, this book, Divorce the Patterns on Each Other, and relationalness seems so significant. And a lot of people, Having a disease in their marriage or their partnership is such a strain or a stress. I love the idea of, of couples self-generated healing together. Generating healing in your relationship, particularly when you have this, you know, this, this challenge of, of being dis at ease together. Because or, or I, I always feel it's a system. And if one person's unsettled, it's going to transfer to the other person. All right. All right. Healing. Couples healing. Uh, we can talk about it two ways. First way is uh, issues come up, whatever happens, uh, it's the same thing. Learn everything you can, uh, read everything you can about how to resolve the situation. Uh, and, and if it doesn't resolve, we have a two, two situations. One person uh, may be extremely angry at that other person. Another person may not want to leave that other person wants to continue the relationship and goes on and on and on. So there's two situations that can wait now. I'm talking about if it doesn't work. We'll talk about how to make it work in a, in a second. But let's take this first example, because healing is absolutely required for both of those people. They have to heal. Uh, life is too much fun to, to go on for months, years and years, and this can last a lifetime. The, the, mm. the anger or the the hurt, <laughs> it can really happen. So the anger one, let's take the anger one first. And, and that's an easy one. And I call it the bypass technique. And it's a neuro bypass technique. And, and it's very easy to do. And it's magical. And here's how you do it. During the morning, uh, extra morning routine, whether it's shaving or brushing your teeth, putting on makeup, whatever it happens to be in the morning, uh, visualize that person. And, and the anger starts to develop. The person, the, the, the anger, the, 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 in the belly, it just, anger, it just happens. At that second, say love and peace, love and peace, love and peace, love and peace, love and peace. Just keep repeating that. Love and peace, love and peace, love and peace. And say it over and over and over for 60 seconds. And that pain will go away. And then do another 30 seconds. So 90 seconds. And that's it. That's all you do. Day one, day two, same thing. You visualize that the anger comes up, the belly gets all tightened up, and you, you say, love and peace, love and peace, love and peace. Just do it. Say it over and over. Day three, day four, day five. And day seven, you, 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 you visualize that person, and there's no anger for a second. Oh, nope, there it is. It's back. Love and peace, love and peace. Day 11, day 10, absolutely gone. Nothing happens. No reaction, and do it for another three or four days, 14 days, and then finish. You never have to do it again. It's permanent, and here's what happens. Next time you see that person, your face, it's, it, it's going to be relaxed. It's not going to be all grunged up and angry. Totally react, and the other person is physically going to just a little bit back. Hmm. Interesting new development. You, you have your small talk, you say goodbye, and off you go. It's a permanent solution. It, uh, it, it, it's magical. <laughs> and it's what it's done 
is your negative response, your anger is a, is a neural pathway. We can see it. We can now actually see it with the equipment that we have uh, in the brain. It's a neural pathway and you have bypassed it. And that neural pathway, that anger one, will sort of atrophy and absolutely disappear over a few years and you will stay uh, with that new pathway. It's called brain elasticity. And if you can do it, <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. It really works. It works for a bad boss. And that one I know personally because I had one of those. And it, it, was, <laughs> it was great. Uh, and and so, so <laughs> this, is, this is one thing if, if the resolution ends up with a person that's anger. Uh, the other way, what if, what if the person's not angry but wants to keep going and the other one doesn't? That's the harder. Actually, that's harder. I, I don't know if you can do this. This, this pathway technique, maybe it'll work. I, I don't know, never, I've never tried it. But this is when compassion is needed. This is when self-compassion is needed more than ever. And a positive approach, like it is going to work out, it's going to work out better than before because now I'm going to find somebody that really, you know, <laughs> mutually <laughs> gives back. Uh, and, and, and the compassion, self-compassion, we talked about uh, self-confidence and, and, uh, and this uh, uh, self-confidence and, and, and kids were always sort of, uh, there's, a, there's a term we, we, we need, we're always saying, oh, you, you have to have uh, self, well, self-confidence. Uh, and this is only good when everything's going great. But the minute things go bad, there is no self. It's self-esteem, that's what I was looking for. Self-esteem. Oh, that's great when everything is good, but it sure lets you down. Uh, when things are bad, but compassion doesn't. Self-compassion can't beat yourself up, and that's that's the second thing. Visualization in this setting, the best thing is now. It really is alpha meditation or, or meditation is alpha brainwave time. Two reasons: one, just the process brings in all of those wonderful uh, those endorphins and the. And the and those neurotransmitters, the dopamine and the feel-good neurotransmitters, it's just that in itself is healing. But another one that it does, we have different realms in our, our head. We have different brain parts and regions. They all want to take over. And three or four of them are pretty nasty. We have an anger one. We have a habit one. We have a, hey, let's have a good time one. But the real one is a frontal lobe. That's the best one. That's the judgmental one. That's the one you want to have in charge. Problem with that. It's a little sensitive. It's, it's sensitive to not enough sleep, no exercise, bad food, and stress. It goes out of commission. But the amygdala, the great anger center, loves it. The amygdala <laughs> loves junk food. <laughs> it, it loves no sleep. And the more strength, the better. It's a primitive part of the brain. And it, takes, it wants to take over so bad, and it does. And, and so this alpha time, kind of separate that, it kind of balances it out. And, and it helps a lot in those ways. And so, uh, number one, it just, just meditation in general really gets a lot of healing with this kind of, a, a, of an injury. Uh, the last, and then, and then when you're in this meditation state, go to the healing place and just send some healing to this, to this issue, to the mind, to the, to the feelings that you have. Uh, there's another one that, that you can try visualization, sort of a guided meditation. And where, where you find your, where you are, you're healing, maybe it's the beach, maybe it's a meadow. Uh, you go off to the right. You walk over to the right. And I call it the delta door. It's an ancient door. And it's delta brain waves, so really, really deep, slow brain waves. And you go toward that door and it disappears into a golden pavilion. Golden Pavilion, you, you visualize, and there's a fountain in front, and there's people all around, wonderful people. They want to be with you. They want to be with you, talk with you. You're filled with compassion. You're filled with joy. You're filled with grace, forgiveness, and they just want to be with you. They think you're the greatest person in the world, and just hang there because it's a really nice place to be. All these people want to be with you. You want to help them, they want to help you. And then five, four, three, two, one, go back to bed. So there's a, a couple of things uh, about couples therapy if it doesn't work. And then I'll tell you a little trick about 
a way to get it to work. Mm. Wow, Glenn, you wanna, that was amazing. Uh, I love everything you say, and I think coming back to the compassion piece is really important. Having that level, and also the difference between our prefrontal cortex, that decision maker, and the amygdala, which is crazy, because I always imagine the amygdala as our competitive instincts, in my language. That's um, like, that's what's yeah. triggered there, right? <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, and it wants to take over its pure anger. It, it, it's nothing to do with competition, and it wants to take over so bad. And there's another one, uh, another name uh, called the habit one, and, and it wants to take over. And then there's a, uh, a a fun one. It wants to have fun 24 hours a day. I mean, we all have them. We all have them, and they can take over. Uh, and, uh, there you go. You know, how does you know? I, I wanted to ask. If we were a fly in the, uh, on the inside of your office, I know you you were sharing with me that you, that people leave in a different state than they come in. Maybe share with us a little bit, because right now someone could be watching, and someone's going through a tough time, and or you know they they're bummed out by the diagnosis or whatever. What would you? How do you transfer what you obviously do as a way of life to the people that come see you that have? challenging diagnosis is like what what do you find as a human being makes the most profound difference and how do you well, that's, the exciting, that? that's that's the exciting thing i i, I love about you know, I, I keep seeing patients I, I just can't resist uh down down at the hospital on, on, on thursday afternoons and, and the reason is is because they always leave feeling better they always do and and the way i do it is, is talk just talk lots and lots of talk and, and talk about what we've uh, what we've done. And talk about that disease process, what it's going to do, and what they can do, and and how to approach it in a positive way, and, and all of the things that we've talked about. And it it, it seems to work. Uh, it's just this healing process, and and I I really get a lot out of it because they feel good, and and they feel good, and and, and go on. Uh, and it's really just discussed just what we've talked about today. Now we don't have too much time, but I want to tell you a little story about couples that, that you'll find interesting. Okay. We find that, that uh, when you fall in love, what happens? Your heart rate goes up. When you fall in love, your heart rate goes up. Turns out the reverse works. If your heart rate goes up, you fall in love with the person. Really? And so the next time you go out, make sure you do some activity to increase your heart rate. Mm. You'll be surprised about the results. Do something like that, that takes cooperation, like a kayak. You have to do this part. The other person has to do that part to keep it straight. Uh, go for a hike. Climb a mountain. Uh, go for a 20-mile bike ride. Uh, habitat. Build a house together. Get that heart rate increased. You'll be surprised what happens. Try this one. Go that's, right. fascinating. that's absolutely fascinating. So you're saying we fall in love, our heart rate increases, and when yeah. our heart rate increases, we become more receptive and generative. That's right. That's right. Wow, that's beautiful. Here's a story, Glenn. Okay. I was, right, I was running, training for that New York marathon, and there she was, my beautiful wife, Joan, <laughs> on the other, other side, made that big U-turn, and, and the rest is history. She's still with me today. And and, and I realized the, the, the other part we had, a, we ran the uh, – the, the, uh, Greek marathon, our first anniversary. My favorite part was our three 20-mile runs to Wellesley each Saturday. And the reason was we went into alpha rhythm. Both of us were in this alpha state. That's a wonderful state. You just float along. Everything's good. You got all those hormones. And you got the additional one. You got a little oxytocin going with bonding hormone. And you're just floating along. It's a fantasy world. You don't want to live in that all day long, but it's a wonderful place. And and so for us, running together, stay together. So there you go, Ben. Good book title. Good, good fifth book title. Yeah, it is. So, okay, I have a question. You, you bubbled me there. You got it. So, wow, you and Joan run 20 miles to Wellesley. 20 right. Miles. Well, I was training, training for a marathon. Right, right. right. Wow. That's a, so what was the other thing, Rose? You had another question. You had another bubbling there. You still have that one? Was, was that, are you already, uh, you're going to ask? Oh, uh, 
Yeah, no, the only other thing was in the beginning, it was interesting because I was thinking about the other conversation we had um, with a naturopath and when people have symptoms, we were talking about symptoms being doorways into bigger health. So it's looking at the symptoms that you're feeling and experiencing with compassion, which is interesting because you said, you know, why did this happen to me? Well, there's a difference between saying, you know, why did this happen to me versus why did this happen to me? Right. And opening that doorway. It's a whole mm -hmm. same question, different perspective. And that's what it's really all about is shifting into compassion for yourself and really open inquiry and seeing what can this teach me and how can I heal? So I love it. That's it, Rose. You're right. The, the main thing is get away from the anger. Mm. That's it. Mm. Mm -hmm. God, Gary, it's such a, it's so good. Um, it's, it's wonderful dialoguing with you in the sense that first dialogue rewires our brain. So I feel speaking to you, it opens up a doorway of, of goodness and curiosity, which I know that you really want people to live this as a way of life. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> You don't see life as, as, as a number on a chronological, as a chronological thing. You see that, in some sense, we're still adventuring into what's possible rather than it's a defined death sentence that we all have. Oh, absolutely. That, that, it, it's, we're conditioned to die. I mean, that's ridiculous, you know? We're conditioned. Everybody says, oh, you're too old to do that. Oh, you're too the way. We're absolutely conditioned to die off. Come on, I'm not going to go for that. <laughs> right. No, that's, it, it, Jacqueline used to say that, uh, he says most people make it dying and he's really about living. So, um, wow, yeah, we got, we got to continue the series with you and love it. How can people be in touch with you and learn more about your wondrous, profound work about you, what I call youthing, regeneration, restoration, couples well-being, and of course, physical well-being? Sure, it's on Epler Health, E-P. LER.com, EplerHealth.com. There's a, actually I have a blog on healing and leave a note, ask a question. Be glad to answer. Thank you, Gary. Great. Thank you, Rose. Good to see you, Rose. You. Glenn. you too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.